Good morning and welcome back to our second leadership training session of Spearpoint Training Institute for 2024. And I believe today will be a very um, relevant topic to discuss, especially in the time we are living in. We are living in very challenging times, times that we are challenged on job security, it is the year of the elections. There are so many uncertainties regarding the future of our nation, the future of our communities, of our churches. So many churches are under severe, severe challenges regarding attendance, finances, and shakings in general in people's lives. We have noticed in uh, 2024 this year has started with a lot of challenges in people's lives and this is the time that courageous leadership is needed to bring stability comfort to reassure people to re-evaluate everything we are doing so this morning we are talking about courageous leadership is required in the in challenging times so often we hear comments from leaders that says, I wish I could be a great leader like this, that or the other. I would, I say, I would surely love to be like this. What are they actually saying? They are actually saying, I wish I could reap a different harvest from my investment. We are reaping what we have sown in the past. One of the challenges we have noticed in, 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 the, in the church is that we are so used to live streaming, sitting at home in your PJs, a cup of coffee and, and rusks, enjoying a cold drink, and then watching the sermon on the telly, or on your laptop we have made people lazy to get up on a Sunday morning and to go to church we are thankful for many that are watching that cannot get to the church we appreciate the time that you have invested in your own future to tune in to the training sessions the live st uh, streaming of the sermons but the problem of a live streaming sermon is to watch on television, look at a fireplace, enjoy the fire and the romance that it creates, that romantic atmosphere. You can enjoy the vision, but you can never enjoy the permeating heat from the fire. In the same way, if you are sitting in your lounge, following a live streaming session either on the training or on the sermon it's great you get the information but there's no there's no uh, fellowship which is required so what is courage courage is what it takes to stand up and to speak courage is also what it takes to sit down and to listen it's said by Winston Churchill. So let, let me repeat this statement. It says, courage is what it takes to stand up and to speak. In other words, to stand up and to speak and to convey your convictions. Courage is also that which asks of you to sit down and to listen. Sometimes we have to listen to others for importation and that importation can impact your life can transform your life can, re can reform your whole organization in other words courage means to have a strong desire to live to take on the form of readiness that's courage when the, the opportunity arises you step up to the plate and you take authority that's courage when every else are still waiting and wondering, is this the real thing or what should we do? Then you're already out of your blocks and you're running. 
suddenly they will have to catch up on you and you are already setting the pace. That's courage. We are living in a time that is called for courageous leaders to stand up and to set an example. So courage is the key to great leadership. So what is the ingredients that constitute great leadership? Where does this courage come from? We are not born with courage. It's not in your DNA. It is something that we must develop. It's not a gift. It's not something we can hope for. It's not something we can pray for. It is something that we work at it and become excellent at it. We build confidence by stepping up to the plate and do things. And that confidence builds your courage. Courage gives you the potential to overcome fear, to overcome that uncertainty, to overcome uh, timidness, to overcome that thing that we all or most of us are battling with insecurities, it's a low self-esteem. Step up, make a difference. Courage is not just an individual trait, but it can also be an organizational trait as well. Your organization can be known, your church can be known as a courageous church. A church that can preach the truth even though it might not be the popular topic. A business that can take courage and stand up and be courageous in setting up a new business venture. So you can develop that culture within your organization. I'm saying it again, it does not come naturally. The natural tendency of any man is to sit back and enjoy the status quo. The courage of, your, of the leader, of us, determines the courage of the team and the organization. If you want your team to be courageous in challenging times, set the pace, set the example. Everyone of us has the capacity of being courageous but we need to train it we need to uh, uh, develop it I've grown up in a typical Afrikaans Afrikaner household where we were taught when you, once you pass your grade 12 go to the army do the right thing do your military training Come out and get a secure job in the government, in a semi-government, parastatals. We can secure your income, have a medical aid, have a pension fund, and if you're lucky, uh, a housing allowance as well. And we are, are we're encouraged to do this. In other words, that entrepreneurial skills, that entrepreneurial drive, has been placed on us. And when things went wrong in our nation, um, post, uh, uh, pre um, democracy, when we were isolated in the world and isolated from the world, suddenly we had to rely on other skills. And we were forced out of our comfort zones into become entrepreneurs and post 1994 that same skill is still there but we had to develop it and this is typically from my cultural background to do things that I'm doing is not your natural tendency but it takes courage to get out of your comfort zone so we all have that capacity but not all of us are embracing it. Courage is not waiting for, you, for, for your fear to go away. We will always have fear of the unknown. Don't wait for the perfect timing. 
your courage determines the timing. So what is the meaning of courage? It means that you don't know everything. It means that your team doesn't know everything. But we know, we believe and embrace the vision to overcome challenging times. We cannot go back to pre-2020, pre-COVID. Those days are gone. We need to do things differently. That's why I've published a book last year, COVID-19, a, co a, a collision course. What has happened in the world? What has happened in the church? How has it, has it affected my life, my organization? and my church and the second part of the book I brought some solutions to the table so we can't just sit and wait for things to happen be courageous this morning I want to challenge you this morning be courageous stand up do things and remember you are not a failure if you make a mistake a person that says, I've never made a mistake, has never tried something new. My question that I want to throw in here, as a freebie, when last did you do something for the very first time? Let me repeat the question. When last did you do something for the very first time in your life? That answer you have just formulated. This is when you have last grown. If you don't do things new or new things constantly or on a intermediate path, uh, pace, it means I'm not growing. And any living organization that is not an uh, organism that is not growing is busy dying. Last night we had a meeting with some of, of, of my leadership and we have launched our own podcast channel. So watch this space. We are starting our own podcast sp space. We, we as a ministry constantly want to renew, revise, adjust where we're going the vision always remains the same but how we do this can change from time to time we can bring in new things last year uh, two years ago 2020 I launched my own publishing house publishing books my own books and other authors books so if you are there and you have a desire to publish a book, I'll help you. Speak to me. Message me. Get my contact details on the, on, on the Facebook page. We have published 35 books in the past three years. I've published 12 myself. Last year, we have launched a new dimension into our ministry. And that is to impact, or infiltrate, impact and transform the marketplace. So I have dusted off my training as a life coach, where I sit with the CEOs, the MDs of companies, training them, equipping them, helping them as a life coach, helping the transition and transformation of the organizations. This year we are starting our own podcast. Pre uh, in 2020, we started live streaming on our sermons and our teachings. So we need to grow constantly. So what are the things that every courageous leader must know? That sometimes good decisions will be unpopular. Don't ask for popularity if you know this is the vision. 
And this brings us to a place where we must add high value, a high premium on our values system. Our values must be paramount. We must know that enforcing our performance standards is necessary to succeed. So raise the standard of, 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 of leading, raise the standard of production, raise the standard of service provision, raise the standard in everything you do. And in this crisis that, that we are facing currently, identify the trigger of the crisis. Address the root and not the fruit. If we address the fruit, the root will just come up at another place. But if you, if you kill the root, it will bring peace and stability. We must ask ourselves this crisis that we are facing, is it a real crisis or an assumed crisis? We must identify the factors that contributes to this crisis. After we have identified this is a crisis, it's not just a phase. Depersonalize your crisis. If a person involved, depersonalize it. Get to the root, the principle that has been violated. Address the principle and not the person or the fruit. And resolve the matter and the person shall follow. Isaiah 59 verse 19 says, So shall fe they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a, uh, uh, like this, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. We are going through one crisis after another crisis post-COVID-19. Um, financially, it become more challenging for many people. So when the enemy comes against us like a flood, the Lord says, the Holy Spirit shall raise the standard against this attack upon our lives. We shall overcome. We shall become successful. We shall break through. Believe in it. Know it. Don't hope it. Know it. Because the belief you have, the passion you have, will spill over to your team, to your organization, your department, your church, your ministry, whatever, you, whatever uh, sector you are in, they shall pick it up. So what are the characteristics of a courageous leader? They will confront the reality head on. They will not shy away. They won't postpone it. They will address it when it happens. By ignoring it, it will not go away. It will just become bigger. A courageous leader is not scared to ask advice. They are not intimidated by other people's wisdom or knowledge. Sit down. If nobody else has done it before, or face the problem before, then you seek wisdom from God. Give me a strategy. And so often when I sit with companies, CEOs, that is my prayer. I might not be an expert of the field of that organization, but God can give me a strategy for that organization. And you know what? He does. Sometimes I'm, so, I'm surprised. No, most of the times I'm surprised. Last week I had a meeting with another organization. I came home, I discussed what has happened. Uh, not the details, but how the Lord led me with solutions to technical problems that I don't have any knowledge about. That is... What we need to do as a courageous leader, you do, if you don't know, you find out, and if there's no answer, you see God's wisdom. Then you stand up and, and you say what is needed, you provide the resources to fix it, and then push back. Don't wait, push back. 
take back ground that has been lost because of challenging times. Take action. Communicate openly and frequently with your team, your staff, your organization, your church. Know this. That, tell them that you know we are going through a crisis. But that you are not in despair. You are busy repositioning yourself and your organization. And you will empower everybody on the team with, a new, with new tools to face this challenge. And then lead the people through the challenge. Make decision. Move forward. Don't wait for things to change. You change it. And in this process of transitioning and reformation, give credit where credit is due. Because we don't have all the answers, we don't have all the solutions. We have a multitude of impartation that makes us successful. And then be accountable yourself and hold others accountable for their actions and decisions. And then we must, we must learn how to share challenging information. Not to be depressed, sad, not to sit down in sackcloth, but to identify the problem or the challenge, share it with your team, but share it in such a way that they know you have already decided you're not going to back off, you're going to push back. And then you have your think tanks for solutions. You have interviews with others. You pray. Act on what you believe. Step up. Move up. Go to a higher level, to a different level. Take the bull by the horns. Look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say, I can do it. I'm no failure. I'm not afraid. I know I can do this. Challenge your comfort zone. And do it. I need to rush. How do I build the culture of courage in my organization? Listen to this one. Set scary standards. Don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept average. You want more than average. You want a higher standard than your competitors. And by having a higher standard, it means we are taking the risk of making a mistake or to fail. But make failing your friend Failing is not your enemy. It's your sparring partner for your future. Make decisions. And make decisions early. Don't back off. Reward uh, innovation. If new ideas, ideas come, reward those people. Pursue all the right opportunities. And then very, very important, delegate. Learn to delegate. We are not Superman that must do everything. So the S on your t-shirt, underneath your shirt, is not for Superman, it's for stupid. It's when you try to do everything yourself. Don't do this. Utilize your team. Utilize the diversity of your team. Our nation's coat of arms logo says unity in diversity. Let us be united even though, even though we are different. Thank you solely for your comment. Appreciate it. So learn to delegate. Remember delegation, as I said last week, is not dumping. 
Dumping is when you give somebody to somebody else to do because you don't want to do it. And they ben don't benefit anything from it. But delegation is when you're handing over a certain task for empowerment for the one who receives the task. But with delegation is the pro providing of resources, providing the training for them to become successful. Now what does it take to be a courageous leader in the corporate world? We need to learn to expand our courage. If you do what you have done last year, you don't need courage. You need repetition. Because I've already taken my courage to start what I had to do last year. Now I'm just continuing on this journey. And if you are no longer challenged in what you're doing, get something in your life that will challenge you again. I've mentioned to you, the publishing house. I shared with you on what I do on, on life coaching, the podcasts, the live streaming. Every year I challenge myself for something new, something different. And by doing this, you're creating opportunities for your followers to step up to the plate and say, this I like to do. And give them the opportunity to do it. That is the sign of a true leader. Don't we, don't we want, don't be in, try to be in charge of everything in, in, in your organization. Allow others to take ownership. A courageous leader has the courage to make the tough decisions. Sometimes we have to stop things that we have been doing because it's not working anymore. Stop it. You're not a failure if you stop it. It means the time is not right anymore for, to do it right now. It doesn't say it will not uh, resurface in the future. But if it's not working now, focus your attention on the things that are working and the things we have to do. The courage is to fireproof your performers. Help them, but protect them in this time of transition. And then redeploy the poor performance. They might be in a position where they, they are not supposed to be. So they are not a, a, a poor performer actually. They might just be wrongly placed. If you redeploy them, suddenly they will excel. And make a success of this. Courage change direction. Courage change direction. And it calls for courage to use courage to change direction. Because to change direction means new things. So in conclusion, courageous leaders will change the lives of others. We don't live for ourselves. Courageous leaders will pull others along with them don't say, oh, it's lonely at the top. It's never supposed to be lonely. You are never supposed to be isolated. You are always supposed to be surrounded by your inner circle. People that you've pulled along with you on this journey. And the more people you pull along with you, the greater the pulling force of others that must be pulled into the future. If you are going alone, you can only make this wake. If you are more people, the wake enlarges, creating a bigger stream that will pull people into destiny. So if you want more people to come with you, empower more people. And everybody, 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 benefits from a courageous leader. Information, as now as concludes as I've said, information must be internalized to bring forth wisdom. And that generates courage to overcome fear. This internalized information will result 
in the transformation of your mindset. And the transformation of your mindset will be transferred to those whom you are leading, which will result in the reformation of people, communities, the nation and the nations to come. Don't sell yourself short. When Henry Ford started his own company building the first car, even though it was not the first car, um, Benz built the first car, but when Henry Ford built his first Ford, I don't think he, he envisaged what we know today of the millions and millions and millions of cars on the marketplace. We don't know where our courageous decisions will end up. But make the decision. Be courageous in this challenging time. For your sake, for the people you are leading's sake, for your business and your church's sake. Be courageous. Thank you for tuning in this morning. And um, I just want to again reiterate, these videos are available on my Facebook page as well as on my YouTube channel. Please go to my YouTube channel, Harvest Pretorius, and subscribe to the channel. And you are welcome to use this material to train, to encourage, and to empower those that you are leading. And if you want me to come to do that as well from a different voice, different perspective, you are welcome to contact me. I've traveled over 22 countries extensively doing leadership training. I love traveling. I love people. So invite me. Thank you for tuning in.